you know, the best way to figure out how to remove toxic people from your life is to listen to some doctors who know what they're talking about. You can do that absolutely for free using the links below this video. The Master Your Mind Masterclass features Dr. Romani, Dr. Christie, and Dr. Judy. Perhaps you've already seen them right here on MedCircle's YouTube channel. This is an incredibly valuable workshop that details things like difficult personalities, stress and anxiety in the workplace, and healing trauma healing trauma from using inner child work. I know that's not directly related to toxic people, but let me tell you this, the best way to get toxic people out of your life is to get your life together, peaceful, content. Register for that free workshop. It's MedCircle's gift to you. Use the links below this video. OMG, somebody who's not toxic in my life, Jackie Colbeth. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Uh, you know, a lot of people, Jackie, we're, uh, we're already at 100 people and we've, we've been live for less than 60 seconds at this point. I think this resonates more than most because everyone's dealing with toxic people. You're not dealing with a toxic person. No, I am dealing with Miss Darla. My Hi, Darla. My beautiful little rescue that I got adopted a little over a month and a half ago. So she sometimes... She's getting sticky, so she's with me everywhere. We have a new Med Circle canine mascot. Well, we're going to have to do a series on how to not screw up your dog because, of course, you know, my neurotic butt's over here like, <laughs> she's so good. She's so good right now. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when is, when is it going to get ruined, right? Yeah. And my friend's like, enjoy. You've had so many dysfunctional dogs. Yeah. Enjoy having yeah. a really <laughs> good Karma has now come back. You have put in your time and now you get to enjoy it. Yes. Enjoy it. I like yeah. this part of karma. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the good karma. <laughs> um, where I'll, I'll share mine of course, but where do you see, where have you had the most toxic people in your life? I mean, that's a great question. I, I think the answer to that is I <laughs> thing I've had, the most toxic people in my life when I was at my most toxic. Profound. Um, so periods in my life when I was not healthy, either mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever, usually, you know, those with which I ran in those times, and this mm -hmm. isn't a judgment because I was no prize, mm -hmm. you know, I've been toxic I'm sure. I mean, mm. I, I had to have been. Um, so I find when I'm in that place, you know, you, you kind of, you kind of, uh, water seeps its own level. Yeah. So actually when I made notes to do this, mm -hmm. uh, interview today, one of my pieces of advice was going to be, well, who you are oftentimes attracts who is around you. And mm -hmm. I don't want to, I know a lot of people go, no, 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 there's like, there are toxic people in life. And that's true too. Like you can sure. be a great person. They're, they're everywhere. They're people. So right. they're everywhere. My, right. mine, I've found the most toxic people in the workplace. And I, I don't mean in the med circle. Well, yeah, because you can't, you don't choose that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, and like the motivation to work on things with a coworker. If I'm not working on something with family, you think I'm going to work on it with a coworker? Well, and you no, know, not really sad, you know, whether that's good or bad, that's not, you know, that's not a judgment. That's just kind of like that kind of is what it is right now. I feel like. Yeah. And I think sometimes toxic people get, let, let's just call it what it is. A lot of toxic people are also narcissists. Narcissists often do yeah. very well in certain high pressure yeah. jobs, in leadership positions, in sales yeah. positions. And yeah. when I say well, I don't mean they're making friends. I just mean that they are moving making their way up money. the ladder, making money, seeing that success. So it oftentimes the workplace encourages toxic people. And then oh. if you and you, then you have to get in 
in what is the phrase like get in the mud with pigs you know well i mean look you're talking to what i call myself a recovering advertising sales executive for like over 20 years working yeah. for different media companies just slanging ads trying to make that next buck get taken on a trip mm -hmm. you know to win a trip to the bahamas or something it was a sales role so mm -hmm. You know, it's it's interesting, and that's probably a whole. We could do a whole separate thing on this. Is well, let's stay on that for a little bit. What? Okay. You're you're, you're in that world, and I'm not going to divulge too much. But she was in that world, y'all. She was not in doing some mom and pop ad agency, you know, in some. No, we town. were we were. You know, I was working amongst really great salespeople. You know, and and the interesting thing about the DNA of a salesperson, which I'm sure is a whole separate mm -hmm. um, deal, is I look at, there, there's a lot of, in sales at least, I've noticed, there's a lot of mental health, and, and I'm not excluding myself, I'm including myself. There's okay. a ton of mental health in drug and alcohol problems. And hmm. I don't say this from like, some judgy place because everyone knows um for a fact i couldn't do that even if i wanted to <laughs> um that you have like a mess of these behaviors and it's not frequent that you're really rewarded for bad behavior until you can enter a sales role and and, and i've been on the receiving end of this meaning i've benefited probably from too much rope if I what, was, what do you mean? Like people are using questionable tactics to close a deal? Well, sure. Okay. That could be, you know, that I didn't see a ton, a ton so much of that. But, you know, there's lots of parties, you know, there's lots of events. I like see. it's very the culture. So, yeah, you see people, whether it's clients, whether it's coworkers, it's a tight knit community and and it was a blast to work in i don't have anything awful at all to say about my career mm -hmm. but if you take a if i took a zoom lens you know i've met some of the most creative amazing people and i've met the most tortured and in tragic individuals mm -hmm. um all within that mix what what do you define as a toxic person um Okay, I'm going to reference this, but this is like me being old. Okay. There was a book called The Celestine Prophecy, and that was written by James Redfield. I might be messing up the name, but that we'll figure that out. Okay. And um, it talked about energy. It's about metaphysics. Okay. And this is what dawned on me is all of us as humans, their theory is we have different ways of obtaining energy from other people. And you basically become toxic when you're an energy suck on any one to many people. So I, I kind of boil down like toxicity to like one, how in what way, what energy are like you contributing, you know, to my life right now? Mm-hmm. Um, is it chaotic, mm -hmm. you know, like nervous energy, like unpredictable? I don't know what you're doing. Is it, um, high energy? Is it lower? You know, I, I'm big on, you know, there are people that you are around. You don't need a doctorate to know this and they leave and you're like, oh, oh isn't that the truth? We all have them. And some of yeah. them we love, right? They could be family, but we'll leave and I'll be like. This person yeah. did not have one positive comment wow. in the wow. negative yeah. Nancy yeah. and they leave and you're like, yeah. to me, while this person isn't like actively trying to engage negatively with me, I, for whatever reason, find their energy kind of toxic because when they leave, I'm like, yeah. Oh my gosh, like that was just brutal. And then you know those friends who are so breezy, the minute you see them, um, you know, you just have a smile on your face thinking of them. Mm -hmm. Those aren't toxic people. Mm -hmm. uh, the Celestine Prophecy is by James Redfield. Great, awesome. Okay, uh, It's apparently that, right? also a movie too. I looked it up. Okay, um, yeah. And that, that really gives me a gauge, you know, other yeah. than the literal version of like, you're my drug dealer or something, you're being toxic, you know, you're giving me toxins. Like, yeah, I, oh, I would, right. yeah, yeah. I would, would definitely, 
you should qualify. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, certainly, I think we can all agree that there is that type of energy that you just feel. I, uh, I think just working at Med Circle, most people email me about toxic people in yeah. relationships. It is yeah. their significant yeah. other, and yeah. often the co-occurring or the not the co-occurring, often the attribute that they are complaining about is this toxic person's attempt or sometimes successful attempt at controlling the other person, getting them to do other things, whether it is by force or manipulate. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes that can be tricky where you it creeps in slowly and then all of a sudden you're 10 years in and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. Am I being totally manipulated and controlled and influenced by this person who does not have my best intentions at oh, heart, you know? Well, it's sadly, I'm, you know, the answer is like, yes, but with a quick, that's not your fault. Mm. You know, I mean, I, there are certain people, right? DNA of people who, who are in relationships and, you know, we're human. I think everybody screws up from time to time, but then there are those where there's like the wreckage is vast and heavy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I kind of equate it as like, look, like I'm realistic. I know everybody's got issues, but like, as far as like, you know, are your issues the size of like a carry on bag or are we <laughs> checking like half the cargo department in the airplane? Like, yeah. 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 You know? Or some people need to charter their own plane and go, <laughs> now hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yes. And yeah. charter. Yes. Charter your own plane. Exactly. And, and, and so like to some level, you know, I think there are those that are kind of toxic and they don't necessarily really like know it. It might be innocent as enough. It's just that person who's really negative, but you know, they're a good person, right? Yeah. Like there's that. And then there's those who you touch on, I think, who are just very good at being master manipulators yeah. and people shouldn't beat themselves up. Yeah. If they do at some point feel duped, you wouldn't be the first smart person yeah. that's gotten manipulated by a toxic and you're talking like probably stone cold sociopath, yeah. you know, in certain cases, all the way, you know, if you're on a spectrum. Um, in the chat, in the live chat right now, there's a discussion going on the difference between OCD and OCPD. Uh, uh, I almost called you Dr. Jackie. Can you believe that? Just now I said me, I, in my mouth, I felt Dr. Jackie coming up. I would have had the editor <laughs> save that clip Just for take me. Take it off of YouTube. Take it <laughs> off. Um, Jackie and I are definitely not doctors. And so I can't answer that for you, even though I probably could answer that because I do know the difference. But we do have a video on the difference between obsessive compulsive disorder and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. They are very different. Dr. Romney explains that. Um, and so also Dr. Jenny Epp explains that. But if you go on our YouTube channel or watch.medcircle.com, we have information on that. Uh, Jackie, I want to show the viewers this clip. It is uh, related to our topic today. Let's take a look. I know for a fact there is an activity that I engage in every day. And when I'm finished engaging in that activity, my mind, I'm angrier, frustrated, more frustrated. Uh, I won't say I'm depressed, but I'm, it doesn't put me in a good mood. And it's going on social media. Mm -hmm. I feel myself mm -hmm. get irritated mm -hmm. reading what somebody had an opinion about mm -hmm. or seeing somebody pretending they have a perfect life mm -hmm. and I know they don't and mm -hmm. nobody does and all the things. <laughs> and I really amp up my my list of nine. I don't mm -hmm. have a nine, but mm -hmm. actually taking a walk going about if I remove social media from that equation. Because mm -hmm. if you go for a 15 minute walk, but you're on Instagram yes. the whole time, yes. you haven't committed to that walk. Yes. If you go get dinner with a friend, but mm -hmm. you're checking your email, mm -hmm. you're not committed to that mm -hmm. dinner. I'm not doing this interview going, mm -hmm. yeah, that is cool. <laughs> well, you know, I'm here. Yes. Be so there with yes. whatever that yes. activity is yes. and get your phone down. Totally. Oh, totally. it's so much better. Totally. And Kyle, you know, when you, you, you hit it on the head is being there, being present, and that's what the mindfulness exercises helps you do. Um, the, one of my favorite books by John Kabat-Zinn, it's called Wherever You Go, There You Are, mm. right? And it's so true, right? Like a lot of times people say, uh, if I move, you know, Dr. Rahm, I live in New York, but I'm not happy here. I want to move to California. Things will be better there. And I would say, okay, I get that, right? I love California. 
and I'm jealous that you live there. And that was always the second place I'd want to go if I would ever move, because you have mountains and you can ski and you can go to the ocean and there's a lot of beauty in nature um, and there's also urban life. So you have a lot of options. So if you can sort of tell me reasonably, like these are the reasons why I imagine myself, I'm an outdoor person or I like to have these kind of experiences, that makes sense. But if you're moving because you think something is better somewhere else, that's a problem. I so get that. I really do so get that. Um, I know. Uh, my, my ex moved like, I don't even know, 11 times when we were together. It was, and and he had that, wow. that it's like grass is greener. It will be better when, it will be better when That's this other lot. thing happens. And wherever you go, you are there. That is so true. But I want to go back True. to my point earlier uh, about this the toxicity of social media. This I, is have, why I don't have it. Neither do I. Now, I have accounts, okay, because I was on it for of course. over a decade. Of course. But I haven't been on there since January of this year. So January, February, March, April, May. So I'm five months clean of social media. Yeah. Huge mental health benefit. Where I see it, though, yeah, I think this is important for people who get off social media or try to get off social media. When I got off social media, I was like, eh, this isn't really that big of a deal. I'm just not on my phone as much, which I guess is mm -hmm. good. <laughs> but what happens is I've had to, so I'm, I'm being a little hypocritical in my speech right now, but I had to go on to get some stuff for work. So I'm on right. social media and I see stuff. And that sinking feeling comes back. Right. That, that terrible feeling comes back immediately. I go, oh, I'd, you, we have become immune to the sinking feeling when we're on social media so much. We're immune to the feeling of being around toxic content because it is normal. If you're on social media two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours a day, which many, pe many people are, many yeah. people are. I was just with a friend. I go, how many hours do you spend on Instagram? Yeah. And he goes, I don't know. And I go, look it up on your phone. I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah, it'll tell you. Yeah, and it was like five or six hours in a, a day on wow. Instagram. That's significant amount It'd of be time like starting a, starting And if that five and six you. hours is just bleh, 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 and you I, do that every day, you don't even feel it anymore. You're I, numb. I never liked. So I have had accounts over the years. Yeah, you, you never really I've got into it. I've never embraced social media. Why though? Why not? Ever. Okay, well, one, I can read you the list, right? So, okay, so to give the viewers context, so I'm 42. I was born in 1980. So I remember life like analog generation, yeah. right? So that's important to know yeah. for my context. And second is I don't care. And what I mean by that is like people would post things but in you that you care point. about stuff. Well, I guess I'd never understood why people would like go on to Facebook and be like on the way to the airport. Yeah. And then like I remember writing a snarky comment like, hey, let me know when you take a dump, okay? Like real sarcastic. And then the guy reaches out to me and is like, you, you shouldn't like comment on my post like that. And I'm like, well, maybe you shouldn't post comment that's worthy of my like a uh, crap. Uh, yeah, response. I'm already over it. I'm already over it. Yeah. So, so one, I don't get that. I don't yeah. need to know and I don't care likely what most people are doing at any given time. Like have at it. It's not, you know, whatever. But you nailed it. The main point is I could be walking down the street having a great day. Why the hell am I going to let a Wi-Fi connection and opening an app like take away my sunshine, the sunshine, so to speak? Because mm -hmm. you're right. How many times like have you been walking about your day? And I remember seeing like an, when an ex-boyfriend got married and I was like, I almost fell into Broadway. I felt like I took a bullet. You know what I mean? You were just I like, know, I'm going about my day. And I was like, holy shit. I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I got up to my desk and I remember being like. I don't want that. I don't want, that's going to happen naturally. Life in general will give me those yeah. moments. Do I, when I don't ask for them, do right. I want to invite them? Because I could be having a, I could really like you. And then you could say something on social media, I think silly. And the point of that is I would have liked you like probably regardless, mm -hmm. you know, had like, you know, people not gotten so, you know, invested into social media to the point where like you're, um, they're, they're, they're not posting about themselves anymore. So it yeah. also lost a lot. Like I'm, you got a cause great, but what I miss from social, if anything, which is not much, but 
it's the connection between my friends, not like what they're thinking, you know, not who they support, like what's going on in their life. Can I see pictures of your kids, yeah, your vacation? Right. Like none of that's even posted anymore. I wouldn't even know where to find that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dietary chef two, two, one says, I wish we could go back to the eighties and nineties Yes, for people when people would go to the mall and talk with their mouths. I'm like, yes, thank you. Dietary yes. chef. I swear if I could just live in the nineties on repeat, oh. the best decade, the best oh, decade, I because we had that. enough technology where we were like yes. getting by and doing stuff and we called and you know, whatever. And we're and so efficient. Too it's too much. Um, okay. So the title of this video is how to remove toxic people from your life. We haven't really delved into that. I want to bring up Dr. Varma's point. Dr. Sue Varma was in the clip we just watched and she is a psychiatrist out of New York. We've done a few series with Dr. Varma mm -hmm. and Dr. Va Varma is not unique in the fact that she brought up mindfulness, which every single doctor I've ever interviewed ever has brought up. Yep. So that tells me this is important. I used yep. to roll my eyes on it. Now I'm a yes. big proponent of it. I'll yep. share the way I learned mindfulness, but I'm going to throw it to Jackie first. Do you, do you practice mindful? Are you mindful of your mindfulness? Well, I mean, you know me well, but for those who don't, if you did, you'd know that when I first heard this, I rolled my eyes and thought it was a bunch of like hippy dippy crap for people that really didn't want to do like any real mental push ups. Exactly. And yeah. that's admittedly what I had thought. I didn't pay much, you know, um, to, you know, loss, my loss, didn't pay much attention to it. When I realized that the word itself, mindfulness didn't involve me like in a pretzel on a yoga mat, you know, uh, humming right. like songs. Once I realized it doesn't, that's not exactly what they mean. And you, and you could get it from other places. So for me, when I practice mindfulness is like when I wake up every day, I write a gratitude list, like with my coffee, right? I live alone. So no one's pen to, looking pen to paper. Like yeah. Yeah. And I write the gratitude list. Like it's the 90s again. Like it's the, the 90s, <laughs> but I'm being mindful of the most important things in my life and why I have them. And I, I don't know what else you should be more mindful of, to be frank. Yeah. Like every day I wake up thinking about how grateful I am to have people I love in my life. It's hard to have like a, a totally crap day after that. I mean, mm. you know, stuff happens, but you know, I woke up, started my day, you know, feeling really blessed and happy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's it. That's where it kind of starts and like stops. Then I'm a whirling dervish throughout the day, but I know every morning after my brain's gotten some rest after a day of running around, I started out with that. And that's really helped me, um, to, to just, to be, more mindful. But again, yeah. I would love to throw my cell phone like off my balcony. I'm one of those admittedly that like, I would love to not touch my phone. Yeah. I've thought about getting, remember those Nokia phones? Flip phones. They're back. I, I thought I go, could they're I back. really do that? But I don't, I need to be able to order an Uber. I get, I well, need to be able to too. order groceries. I imagine working without a smartphone. It would be almost, it, it would be impossible. No, I no. Well, that's just it. Right. That's the bummer. But like, it I would be cool though. It would be cool if I had a flip phone and instead of ordering an Uber, I called a cab company and I was like, come get me. And I just like lived a more simple, less convenient life, you know? Yes. Or we could, you're giving, I'm getting great ideas from dietary chef too yeah. with this. We should start like at some point, people are going to miss the 90 so much. They're going to pay to go to a place to have it recreated for them. And it's like, you can do like a week back in the nineties and you know, okay, you can Jackie, have literally. I have had this same idea. I I told my friend, I go, we need to Why find are we a telling house. everyone about this? <laughs> I know. Sorry. Go, go. Good go. idea. <laughs> oh, why are we telling everybody? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. no. Go go on though. So you see what I'm so saying. I, yeah. I wanted to go buy a house that was built in like 1993 with all the original furniture and it's just there and you put it on Airbnb and you rent it. And when you yeah. go there, all the TV, like you do it where you go come live 
you know, in, in March 13th of 1993 and the TV is that. whatever the programming was on March 13th. The radio is playing the songs from March 13th, 1993. Ooh. Everything is 1993. I, I would sign up for that. Oh I would God, do a day there with my friends. You put way more thought into this than I ever had. I love like the soundtrack of the day, basically. Yeah. You've got the whole like you listen to the news that day and you're like, all right, we're in 1993. You know, I would do this. I'd yeah. pay. Uh mindfulness, huge for me. Here's my uh way to do it. Learned it from Dr. Romani. If you if you're a med circle member, uh, you've already heard this. Okay. So I apologize for the redundancy. And oh. And if you're not a Med Circle member, you can still get a fabulous Med Circle Premium Masterclass for free this month. We released it. It's the Master Your Mind Workshop. The links are in the description. It's totally free. Lots of doctors. I'm not going to pitch it to you. Check it out if you're interested. But the, um, the now what was I talking about? Mindfulness and how you go about. <laughs> Give me. What was I talking about? Mindfulness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was, that, was, that was almost as good as Dr. Jackie. <laughs> Dr. Ja Thank you, Dr. Jackie. Uh, yes, mindfulness. So when you wash your hands, everybody washes their hands probably. When you wash your hands, make that your practice session for mindfulness. How do you do that? You don't think about anything other than what you are doing. I am rubbing my hands. How does that feel? What is the pressure like? Can I feel my nails? Can I feel the skin? Can I pinch the skin a little bit? Yeah. I mean, get as granular as possible. What does the warmth of the water feel like? What does the smell of the suds feel like? What does the sound of the water going down the drain sound like? Don't think about your next step. Don't think about what phone call you just got off of. Don't think about what you have to do tomorrow. You, you get 30 to 40 seconds of complete mindfulness bliss and what happens is the first time you do it and then you start thinking about something and you're like oh shoot i wasn't supposed to think about that okay you go back and you do the mindfulness thing and then the second time you do it a little longer then the third time it's a little longer then all of a sudden these hand washing times your brain's like all right this is our time to be focused calm in the moment blah 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 and then you're building that muscle to apply it wherever you are whenever you are and so that's number one number two something that I don't know if I coined, but it's something that I started using when I uh, was interviewing all these doctors on mindfulness is forced mindfulness. I used to take dance classes for fun. Yeah. Um, I just want to, I wanted to let everyone know is for fun, not to become a professional dancer, even though I would love that. Uh, I would take dance classes. You cannot learn choreography and think about your to-do list. It is an impossibility. Ooh, you have to be I in the moment. Even imagine. So when I am learning choreography in a dance class, it is as mindful as I can get because wow. I am all there. And, the, and the, let, let me tie it back on why this helps remove toxic people from our yeah. life. It is a way to cope with the toxic people that are going to be in your life because you probably can't fire your coworker. But you can have moments of peace with mindfulness. Um, so that's my other mindfulness thing. Now I'm going to give, I can already hear Dr. Romani saying, yes, Kyle, say this next point. This is what you should say. The big thing, if you are going to have a toxic person in your life, maybe you're married to this guy who's toxic, but you're staying in the marriage for any reason you want. Right. And that is okay. And no one can tell you what to do or how to live. Right. There are plenty of reasons to stay in toxic relationships. People do it all the time. That they is do. your choice. They sure do. If you are going to stay, mm -hmm. you must radically accept that nothing else is going to change. Because if you wake up every day expecting your golden retriever not to shed, you exactly. will be disappointed every single day because the golden retriever shed unrealistic expectations to me is like the root of all misery of most things because people don't shoot it straight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, do that's why I love Dr. Romney. I, I think that's why so many people do. Well, she, not only is she brilliant, she's, she's unbelievably talented, but that's, that's one piece, but her other gift is her ability to, to be direct. And, you know, cut, just Tell cut it through it in a real. practical. No. And that just, it's a gift. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and sometimes that's hard for people to hear. And I'm kind of like, good, because don't you want to hear the right. truth? 
Like, don't you want to hear what the realness of it all is? I mean, and- I, you know my family. I grew up in, like, our, on our, like, tombstone, it mm-hmm. will be, like, don't blow sunshine up my ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I grew up in, a, you know, where it's like, don't walk me off the ledge, okay? Yeah. Tell yeah. me what's up, yeah. what's real. And then there, from there, you know, the expectations will dictate you know, how you're mentally working through it. But I think people that give whack expectations because they think you're doing you a solid are not really doing you a solid. Yeah. Yeah. No, no question. Um, We're coming towards the end of this discussion, Jackie. Is there, first of all, I want to pull the audience. How do you create healthy boundaries from toxic people, remove toxic people from your life, radically accept the facts that, toxic people are going to be toxic i would love to highlight some of those if we can and jackie um when you're when you're stuck in a place where you have to have interactions with a toxic person Mm -hmm. you just have to okay it could be brief or it could be forever right because you know aunt lily could just right. be a toxic aunt and she's going to be always there every the Christmas. Aunts. It's yeah. always the poor It's always aunt. those ants. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you deal with that toxic aunt that you're going to have to see a few times a year? Well, I, I, I mentally prepare as if I would go in, you know, not necessarily into a battle, but into a situation yep. that I don't find comfortable. Right. So I have to like, you know, like a couple days before, or, or if I have, you know, enough notice, mm-hmm. you know, I will just be, you know, okay, they're probably going to do this, but you know what? I think of the Costanza and Serenity Now, that old Seinfeld episode, you know, but just, you know, mentally telling myself, okay, don't let your wire get tripped. Yeah. Just telling myself, don't be reactionary to this person. Like literally it will take two days of me telling myself that in order for it to occur. Yeah. The, The prep is everything. I have, I probably have two or three people that I, that I see somewhat regularly yep. in my, if throughout the year yep. and when I know I'm going to see them, I have to go, okay, I'm going to do deep breaths. I'm yes. going to keep the topics very superficial. We're going to talk about the weather. Uh, we're going to keep it brief and short. That's I'm awesome. not going to find myself on a one-on-one with this person. Smart. And you know, a diet Coke helps me get Smart. through the day too. So um, we have a have a few uh, comments to uh, throw up here. I think I can do it, Wade. Let me see if I can throw up these comments. First, I want to highlight Dietary Chef again. He's coming through with a lot of great comments. He said, when I stopped drinking six years ago, I never thought one of the highlights of my day would be literally just relaxing in a hot shower without the toxic anxiety of yesterday's drink. Well said. I'm sure a lot Bravo. of people can relate to that. Yes. Uh, when asked, how do you deal with toxic people? OBG Foster says, while getting lectured by my <laughs> pompous coworker, my head plays the theme song from Benny Hill. Nothing. Hey, you know what? You got to do I what you got to do. You got to do. I don't even know oh, the theme song from Benny this. Hill. I don't know what that is, but. Uh, That's amazing. Uh, I'm going to use see. that. Um, this Desiree. Hi, Desiree. I think I've seen you before on here. It isn't the, if it's the same Desiree. She says, I practice saying my boundaries out loud to hear myself. I love, I, like I love this one. I like that. So I can feel comfortable saying them to toxic people whom I come across. Oh, yeah. I like because that, if you, Desiree. if you tell a toxic person, Hey, that's my boundary, blah, blah, blah. That's not going to work. You got to practice these things and go, these are my boundaries. This is, you know. Right. And know they're going to try to push them. Oh, yeah. They'll try to push them. But I like that practice. Practice makes perfect. I like that. Uh, Aunt Karen. Hey, we were just talking about ants. Hi, Aunt Karen. Not you, though. Uh, Practice (laughs) and preparation, she says. We were just talking about this. When they ask a toxic question, I ask a question back. That always stumps them. You know, that's an old Ooh. debate trick. I was in debate for about five years. Oh, I love this. Yeah. If you're ever talking with somebody and and you're debating them, and yeah. I mean, this sounds manipulative, but in a debate, you're trying to win. You right. would uh, you would end your statements, your argument with a question. Um, so there's, there's some truth Ooh. to that. Strategy. Um, I like it. Morg in the void says, I've been trying to remind myself that I'm allowed to set my own boundaries. And if they react negatively, then they don't deserve a place in my life. 
I try not to feel guilty for setting boundaries. That's so honest. And that's awesome. That's so honest and well put though. It's hard to set boundaries, period. It's really hard to set boundaries. I've find with family oh, oh i've given up i don't i've given up on boundaries with family right <laughs> you're like you know what come on come on whatever you know i'll deal with it radical acceptance i have radically accepted my family was not probably formed with boundaries therefore okay. we wouldn't know what they were if they came along i think so it's you know it <laughs> That's just how we are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, setting them. And then what I found too, though, it's one thing to like set them and you feel like you're really like, okay, I set this. And you're like, yeah, pat in the back. Yeah. And then inevitably that person, if they're toxic enough, is going to crash your boundary again. They're going to go over the line. Yeah. So it's more, sometimes the harder part is like, okay, Jesus, I'm going to have to perpetually just be reinforcing this thing. Like you make a really good point. How setting many the times boundary is might be the easiest part. It's Enforcing maintaining the boundary. Your boundary. You yeah. don't want to get breached. Yeah. And you're gonna try to get breached. Yeah. Uh Bart de Haas says my way to not interact too much with my toxic neighbor and step out the door when she is stepping out the door when I have time to wait and depart later. Wow. Yeah, no, look, those little things can make a, a big difference. <laughs> No, huge. I was going to say that's so polite. You must not live in New York, Bart. <laughs> they would have flying out like, oh, I got you now. Yeah, that's what, probably what I would do, honestly. Uh, Gina says, I love you, Jackie. Oh, that's so nice. how nice is that? Thanks, Gina. Um, make, make an old girl cry. I Gina also said something very nice about our channel. This channel has oh. helped me so much. I was in an abusive, narcissistic relationship at the time. I am out now, also learning coping skills for me, and most importantly, teaching my daughter. Oh. That is the best gift I think you can give. Incredible. Yes, Incredible. that's awesome, Gina. Hey, y'all, I love reading these comments. There are certainly more than we can uh, get to right now, um, but we will uh, be reviewing them in the comment section after this video gets posted. Uh, I, I, I want to say thank you to everybody who does support this channel. You know, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. We are in the last week of Mental Health Awareness Month. We've had a lot of events, a lot of videos, a lot of live streams, a lot of workshops. We're not finished yet. Uh, I want to give the viewers a gift, Jackie, and then I want to invite them to our big live event. Um, our gift to you for Mental Health Month is a masterclass featuring three of our esteemed doctors, Dr. Romani on difficult personalities, Dr. Christy Lamb on stress, anxiety, and burnout in the workplace, and Dr. Judy Ho on inner child work and healing trauma. You can access that masterclass completely for free using the description below the video. You submit your email. We send you the masterclass. That's the end. It is our gift to you. We appreciate that. Uh, number two, we have something we've never done coming up on May 31st. We have... I think it is six hours long. You don't have to watch or attend the whole thing, y'all. But we have six, four, it's either four or five or six hours of a live event featuring nine mental health professionals. I won't even begin to list them, but it will be med circle doctors who you're familiar with, Dr. Romney, Dr. Dom, Dr. Christy Lamb, Dr. Judy Ho, Dr. Thuslam, professionals that you've probably not met. We have Dr. Uh, Shafali coming back on parenting, an incredible, incredible doctor, and more. Those, the really cool thing about this live event is that not only are they going to be sharing actionable insight and strategies, but they're going to be answering your questions. So you know how you and you guys ask Jackie and I questions about mental health, and, and like, we like don't we're not it. doctors. <laughs> And we're like, I, uh, yeah, because that's not really what we do. Uh, so we are bringing you the people who this is what they do. This is what they do. You want to know the difference between OCD and OCPD? We got you. OK, you want to know how to broach a sensitive topic with your spouse? The doctors got you. Do you want to know about conscious parenting from Dr. Shafali or what that even is? We got you. We're going to teach you. We're going to answer your questions. You don't have to navigate this alone. Okay. You don't have to do this alone. We can help you do this. We can do this together. That live event is for Med Circle members. 
So if you are interested in attending that live event and look, the reason we're doing Med Circle members, because if we open this up to our one and a half million YouTube subscribers, you know, that that is no longer an, an intimate Q&A session. So this is for our Med Circle members. Right. Uh, there are a variety of membership options, more than there have ever been. You yeah. also can just attend the event for a one-time fee and not become a member, okay, yeah. if you're not interested in that. So there's lots of ways to do that. We will include, or Wade, I don't know if we can get a link put up right now, but in the description of this video, we'll, by the time you're watching this on the replay, we'll have a link in there where you can sign up for that as well. And if you exactly. need anything... Yeah, oh, go sorry, ahead. Kyle. No, go ahead. Um, no, just something I, I totally wanted to add to because it, we're producing, to your point, tons of content, right? Mental Health Month, May, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And the whole reason we are producing all this content and we are, we wanted to get all of these doctors on the platform was because at the very end of the day, access to these people is either impossible, precarious, or long, or expensive. It's all yep. about access, right? And even just being able to, though it's not one-on-one -on -one treatment, enable to sort of get some of their mind share on questions that you have, knowing that they're coming from a credentialed source. I mean, you know, sadly, the way the system is set up now, that can take many, 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 many months. So what we wanted to do in, in honor of Mental Health Month for our membership and also for our YouTube audience mm -hmm. is um, to go ahead and, and produce um, more content than than usual. Yeah. And um, make sure everyone can um, easily access it. Yeah, it's you, that is the point. That is the point. Everyone deserves access to the best minds. Yeah. And we are bringing that to you in as many ways as we can. Yeah. Um, all the links in the description of this video. Jackie, I don't think you're toxic at all. So I'm happy. No I boundaries know. with you. You're you not just, toxic you just at all. You whatever either. you want. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Oh, that I go. That's it? so nice. I was called non toxic today. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Colbeth, not toxic. Excellent. Not toxic. Um, guys, I appreciate you watching this. Give it a little, uh, give it a thumbs up. Would you? I just, I check those thumbs up. You, you know? do. I can't look. Oh, and by the way, Jackie, I've been reading the comments and some I of the podcast look. episodes and there is a lot of compliments to, towards you. Oh, nice. Yeah, specifically towards you. And I know you don't read the comments. Nice. So that's why I, I don't, comments. I'm too yeah. fragile. Like mentally, I would be like, I think it'll send me into a downward spiral. <laughs> Good. Well, that is a boundary that you should maintain. But then. thank you for sharing that. Like yeah. I'd be lying if I wasn't curious, but not yeah. curious enough to actually do it myself. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Good. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll screenshot some and send them to you, but they are, they are very complimentary, of course. Thank um, thank you, Jackie. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Med Circle. I'm Kyle Kittleson. Remember, whatever you're going through, you got this.